Hi, I'm Amanda Freed. I'm Leah Amico. I'm Tariah Flowers. I'm Lovey Jung. I'm Mike Candrea, head softball coach of the women's Olympic softball team. Welcome to Sports School. In this segment, we're going to cover the position of pitcher, a very special position, obviously, because they put a circle around this position. You don't see any other circle on the field. Obviously, in fast pitch softball, it's hard to be successful unless you have a good pitcher on the mound. We have with us today Amanda Freed, who's going to share with us some of her thoughts on pitching. And we're going to begin by talking about the pitching motion. Amanda, go ahead. To begin with, we're going to start with our feet. And what you want to do is position your feet so they're about shoulder width apart. Start with your, your front foot as much towards the center of the rubber as possible. And this is going to enable us to, to direct our path straight towards the catcher every time. Turn your toe slightly outward so your thigh is facing more towards the catcher so you can open up. So starting with that, we're going to present the ball. With your back foot on the rubber at all times, you always have to start either on just a little bit or at least touching the rubber. And what you want to do is kind of like hitting, you're going to get into a slight negative motion and that's going to prepare you to drive forward. So we're going to present, come back a little into our negative, load onto our front leg so we're able to drive towards the plate. So we're going to drive forward, bringing our left leg and our right arm up and we're going to come into an X position. With this glove out, we're going to, it's just like throwing, it's used as a leverage. We're going to start coming down with our arms. Make sure that your hips and your shoulders stay open towards third base. This is going to allow you to clear your hips so your arm can come in a full straight circle through your, through your path towards the catcher. And then you're going to follow up with your hips and your feet slightly open or closed towards your catcher. And this is going to get you into that position to field your ball, which is your second priority after throwing the pitch. And like she says, it's just like hitting. You prepare by making a negative move, and then your positive move toward the plate allows you to generate your force directly towards your target. So let's watch her. You always want to begin with the fastball because that's going to build your base for every other pitch. Once you can consistently throw fastballs about 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10 times using the correct mechanics, then you can begin throwing the breaking pitches. Okay, hey Amanda, there's three foundation pitches, usually the drop, the change, and the rise. Can you maybe show us the grips that you use on those pitches and maybe some variations, and then maybe demonstrate each of those pitches for us? Okay. There are two more common drop balls that we see um, in the youth and growing up. One is the flip drop or the peel drop, and I like to see it thrown off of the four seams. So you put your fingers across the long seam like this. Everything's the same as a fastball. Every time you set your base, Peel off your fingers and then finish through with your hand. Okay, the second pitch we see is the turnover drop. And you can grip it in a number of different ways. One way is across the four seams. Another way is on the two seams, but you always want to have your fingers positioned in a way that you can utilize the seams and get over the ball. So the way we see this is your body position is the same as the flip drop except you're going to turn over in the front of your left thigh. Okay, Amanda, the second foundation pitch is the rise ball. Can you kind of show us the grips on the rise? Yes, the rise ball is also thrown with the four seams. We're going to go ahead and place our strong finger, which is our middle finger, on that long seam. If you have a little bit bigger hands, you can tuck a finger, and that'll get a little more leverage on the seam. All you're going to do is come in your arm circle. When you come to your thigh, you're going to start this under motion, almost like you're going to turn a doorknob underneath the ball so you get that the four seam rotation under. Really use strong fingers and a strong forearm 
snap the ball out, and you're going to finish right up in front of your body. So a rise ball would spin in a backwards rotation? Yes. Generally, it won't get completely backwards spin, but um, you're looking more at about 11 to 5 rotation on the rise ball, the way your hand's going to finish up. The third foundation pitch is the changeup, and the changeup is probably the most important pitch in fast pitch softball because it's the pitch that allows you to keep hitters off balance. Can you kind of demonstrate your grip on the changeup? Yes. There are a variety of different ways to throw changeups. Today we're just going to go over the basic backhand changeup, which is one of the more popular changeups used. Go ahead and throw it off the four seams, the long seam also, just like the last pitch. And what you're going to do is when you get about halfway down in your swing, coming down, you're going to start turning your hand towards the back, so your, the back of your palm is facing the catcher. Keep your fingers bent and your wrist straight. You're just going to let the, the ball come out from behind your fingers. Just by having your hand behind the ball instead of, instead of in front of you, you're going to be able to take speed off of the ball. So come down, turn your hand so that it's behind, throw it, and then finish through. You don't want to finish up. You want to finish straight towards the catcher. Keep it low. The legs are the most important part of every pitch, especially in differentiating between the drop ball and the rise ball. If you notice, when throwing the drop ball, you're going to be taking a slightly shorter step than you would a fastball or a rise ball. This is going to get our body in the position so we can get over our legs and over the ball because this pitch is going to be going down. Now for the rise ball, you want to extend your length, the length of your stride as much as possible because you're now getting under the pitch. You don't want to come over because then you're going to flatten out the rise ball. So you want to get out, still under your legs, but stride out just slightly further than even your fastball so you can get under the pitch and then finish up. Amanda, do you think you can maybe uh, demonstrate these pitches for us? Let's begin with the uh, drop. Okay. Okay. And on this pitch, we want the uh, rotation to be spinning downward, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Spinning down is going to enable the ball to drop. You set your base. When you come to your thigh, peel off your fingers and then finish through with your hand. Okay, we're going to go ahead and Go to the turnover drop now. Your body position is the same as the flip drop, except you're going to turn over in the front of your left thigh. All right, Amanda, can you now demonstrate the rise ball? You want to keep your arm as straight as possible, coming all the way down. You want to try and avoid bending too much wrist or bending too much elbow, and that's going to make you short arm the ball, or you're going to be a little bit inaccurate. So as long as you can keep an open path and a long arm, you're going to stay fairly accurate in most of your pitches. And I'd like to say that this is a pitch that really um, separates baseball from softball. Obviously in baseball it's very hard to make the ball go up, but in softball uh, the rise ball is a true pitch and it's not an optical illusion. The ball does go up and a very difficult pitch to hit. When you come to your thigh, you're going to start this under motion, almost like you're going to turn a doorknob. Snap the ball out and you're going to finish right up in front of your body. And Amanda, what's the final pitch in the foundation pitches? Final pitch we're going to go over is a changeup. And first, we want to notice that the legs are going to be fairly similar to the drop ball because we want to make sure that this pitch is one that stays low so the batter is unable to detect it when the pitcher releases it. Also, there are slight variations to just the traditional backhand changeup. If you turn over slightly your finger, you'll get a little bit of a drop spin on it. So it's just, just a, slight, a slight flick of the wrist, and you're going to get a little bit of a variation of a straight backhand changeup. up. 
Now, man, one of the key elements of throwing in a, a successful off-speed pitch is selling it. How do you sell it as a pitcher? Well, your off-speed pitch is going to be the most effective if you can keep it looking like every other pitch that you throw. That means a fast arm, the same body motion, same finish to the catcher. As long as it looks like any other pitch, you're going to deceive the batter and you're going to have an effective changeup. Let's give a quick review to the viewers on what we went through in pitching, beginning with the uh, motion. Okay, we started with our positioning on the rubber, right foot in front, of the, in front of the left, slightly touching the back of the rubber with your left foot, starting in the middle of the rubber, presenting the ball with your slight negative movement, loading onto that front leg so you can get into this nice open left leg drive. Open up your body to clear the path for your arm. Your arm comes down through that path as you're driving forward with your right leg. Finish through the pitcher, shut off your hips, and be prepared to field the ball.